Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Our second game of the week is a top 15 showdown in the Colonial Athletic Association. We've got number 13, Albany, going on the road to take on number 14, New Hampshire. And guys, let me tell you, this is a fantastic way to kick off the season for both of these programs. This is the first game of the season for both Albany and and New Hampshire, and this is a Colonial Athletic North Division showdown. If you remember from our FCS preview video, we talked about how the Colonial Athletic was the conference we were most excited to watch this year, and it was mostly because of this division, one that consists of Albany, New Hampshire, Maine, Villanova, a total of seven teams, all of which that can win the North Division, while the South Division in the Colonial Athletic only has four teams, and really is going to be led by James Madison. Only four teams where James Madison will certainly be the favorite. It really doesn't have much competition, maybe with the exception of Elon, who just lost to Gardner-Webb by 22. So regardless, this is huge for many, many reasons. Not just because it's a top 15 showdown, but because it has major conference title implications as well. So before we dive into the stats and the numbers for both these teams going in, there's not really much to look at considering this is the first game of the year. Let's look at what they did in 2019, the last time these two teams played a season. Albany, the Great Danes, they went 9-5, and 6-2 and two in conference play. They did beat New Hampshire back in 2019, beat them 24-17, to and hopefully we will get a game very similar to that on Friday night. Again, this is a Friday night matchup. The Great Danes did fall, though, in the second round of the playoffs to Montana State, ending their season a little too short, but it was a historic season for Albany. They're hoping to continue that success and carry that momentum now into this spring season. New Hampshire, on the other hand, they went just 6-5. and five. And maybe that's why a lot of people are surprised that they are 14th in the country. They were 6-5 and five, uh, back in 2019. Now they're number 14 in the country. Well, they returned a lot of talent from that team. And that team was not too bad. They did have top 25 wins over Villanova. They had a top 25 win over Stony Brook. And for the most part, they were extremely competitive, even though they failed to make the FCS playoffs. I have a feeling that both these teams will be in the playoffs come April. Let's go ahead and take a look at the offense here. Let's take a look at the two sides of the ball for the Great Danes and for the Wildcats. And let's start with Albany. Uh, if you know me and if you've watched our FCS coverage over the last few weeks, you know I'm really, really excited to watch Albany football. And it's because of one man. It's because of one man Maybe the best quarterback in the FCS right now, Jeff Undercuffler. Jeff Undercuffler, who put up ridiculous numbers the last time he was out there. 3,524 yards, 41 touchdowns to just 10 interceptions. Unreal. The only other quarterback that was better than Jeff Undercuffler was Trey Lance. And we all know that Trey Lance, the North Dakota State alum, is going to be a first round, maybe top 10 NFL draft pick in April. That's the only guy that was better than Jeff Undercuffler. And now he's back for Albany. And he's not looking to get, get to the second round. He's looking to make the FCS championship. He led the Great Danes to 31.4 points per game last season. We keep saying last season because technically it wasn't last year. But last season, 31.4 points per game. The problem for me, it only concerns is that there's a young wide receiver core there. So Albany has a relatively young wide receiver core. I wonder and, and, and worried a little bit about the chemistry between Undercuffler and these wide receivers, especially considering it hasn't been uh, the very typical offseason that we're all used to. But even if there is any struggles in the passing game, Albany has a fantastic running back and Carl Mofor to pick up that slack. Mofor rushed for over 1,200 yards, almost 1,300 yards last year. Had 10 touchdowns. The team averaged 131.4 rushing yards per game. They're relatively balanced. They've got talent across the board. If chemistry is an issue, I have no doubt in my mind that the running game can pick up the slack. You look at the Wildcats of New Hampshire. Again, they're the home team in this matchup, the 14th ranked team in the country. Their offense wasn't anything special. They averaged just 20.2 points per game last season. They had 195 passing yards per game and about 142 rushing yards per game. So they were relatively balanced. They just weren't going to knock you dead. They weren't too fast. They weren't too flashy. And neither of those numbers exceeding 200, uh, especially in the passing game, worries me a little bit. But a reason for that is because they were dealing with a freshman quarterback. New Hampshire was dealing with a freshman quarterback last season, Max Brosmer, 
threw for over 1,700 yards, 10 touchdowns, but had 11 interceptions. That's a concern here. He was just a freshman. Let's keep that in mind. So our freshman QB steps into a New Hampshire program that didn't really have sky-high expectations. They do now, but not then. 10 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. He's got to cut down on those, and I think he will. I think he will. Starting a whole season as a freshman QB, you're going to make mistakes. Now he's had a lot of time to learn, a lot of time to build chemistry with four of his top wide receivers returning now in 2021 for the spring season. Expect their chemistry to maybe be a little bit better than Albany, even though Albany does own the quarterback advantage and the quarterback edge with Jeff Undercuffler. A lot of things to kind of process there and keep in mind, but that is the million-dollar question. You look at New Hampshire outside of the quarterback position. They have Carlos Washington. He is going to be the star running back for them. Had 591 yards and three touchdowns last season. Again, he might be a guy that has to pick up the slack too if Brosmer cannot take care of the football. You look at the defense, guys. What are we looking at for Albany here? How are they going to stop a New Hampshire offense that, again, is relatively lackluster? They're mediocre. They're nothing flashy. Not going to knock you dead. But they're balanced enough that they can move the ball methodically and win and dominate even the time of possession. So you look at Albany defensively. Last season, they allowed 25.5 points per game. They allowed 152.1 rushing yards per game. They allowed 213.7 passing yards per game. One crazy stat that sticks out to me, though, is not the rushing yards. It's not the passing yards. It's the fact that Albany forced, forced, not recovered, but forced 25 fumbles in 2019 or in the last season. Forced 25, recovered 17 of them. That's pretty dang impressive. I know for some people that doesn't sound like a lot. That's a lot. They pop the ball out from the running back, the quarterback, the wide, whoever it is, 25 fumbles and recovered 17 of them. And I'm telling you, if Brosmer is a little bit rusty, if Brosmer is a little rusty coming in for New Hampshire, he's turned the ball over a little too much, doesn't have that chemistry that we think they're going to have, Carlos Washington better do a dang good job of holding on to that football because we know that Albany is a ball hawk and we know that Albany can find a way to steal it from you. And that's going to be my biggest concern here for New Hampshire is ball security. Not just with fumbles, but Brosmer taking care of the ball. Again, more interceptions than he had touchdowns last season. You look at New Hampshire, what are they looking at defensively? They allowed just 20.1 points per game. So their offensive numbers and their defensive numbers were relatively similar. Not much of a discrepancy there. They allowed 139.1 rushing yards per game. They allowed 213.8 passing yards per game. And that is the number that I am concerned about for the Wildcats. I'm concerned about that because Albany last year with Undercuffler had 256.4 passing yards per game. When you've got a quarterback that's that talented and that dynamic, you're going to air it out. Why wouldn't you? And now he's back. And again, chemistry could be an issue, but I believe that the quarterback can build that up relatively quickly. Undercuffler's talented enough to make the plays, even with an inexperienced core of wide receivers. Undercuffler's only getting better, and he has only gotten better over time. And he will only get better over the course of this game. If he comes out rusting the first quarter, by the third quarter, he'll be just fine. They'll make those adjustments. So if I'm New Hampshire, my defensive key is prevent that great performance from Undercuffler, prevent the passing game from succeeding, and try to make Mo4 win this game on the ground for the Great Danes. He absolutely is capable of doing that. But again, New Hampshire's rushing defense last year, less than 140 rushing yards per game allowed, not too shabby. That's going to be what they need to focus on more than anything because Albany is more of a pass-happy team. So what's going to happen in this game, guys? A top 15 Colonial Athletic North Division showdown. Again, what a fantastic way to kick off the year. You know, we had so many games that could have been games of the week here uh, on the Gridiron Expert. You know, last uh, yesterday we did South Dakota and North Dakota, so number 21 and number 4. Now we've got 13 in Albany. We've got 14 New Hampshire. Uh, we got so many great games following a week where we saw 11 ranked teams go down. You could not ask for a better way to kick off this season and I will tell you that although this game is at New Hampshire, although the Wildcats are getting to host this game, I can't bring myself to pick against Albany. Not because of a bias, I have no allegiance to the Great Danes, but because when you really stack them up side by side, Albany owns, for the most part, the clear advantage at almost every position. They absolutely own that offensive edge, they own that quarterback edge, they own that running back edge. I believe they own the offensive line edge. They carry a little bit more momentum 
into this season than New Hampshire does. When you look at the defense, I would say that these two teams are relatively even defensively. I might even give New Hampshire the slight edge defensively, just based on their numbers from last year. Again, we haven't seen these teams play now in this spring season. But even with a slight edge, I don't think a slight defensive edge is going to be enough to make up for the electric offense we're going to see from Albany on Friday night. So I do believe that the Great Danes go on the road as about a two-point favorite. They're not favored by much, but at about a two-point favorite, go on the road, take down the New Hampshire Wildcats, kick off the year 1-0, and and there's a very good chance that Jeff Undercuffler and Albany will be the biggest threat to James Madison and the Colonial Athletic Association. No doubt in my mind. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything down in the description below. We've got so much more FCS coverage coming your way over the course of this entire season, all the way through May 15th. We've got college football content 24-7, 365, and everything down in that description is extra stuff, extra content, extra things to help you get through this offseason, to help you widen your college football knowledge uh, and just enjoy it that much more. So give it a look. I promise you won't regret it. And once again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.